Dio e mi perdo io Special in this uh, We've been looking for a uh, few more forces up where we called it a day This job is not like ordinary jobs, it's smell life One minute it can be kind to you and the next minute it can try and destroy you I think uh, I would have to be away from the harbour and away from the MD, it's speaking to me about fish because it just brings everything back. that year I was 17 so I was just starting to drive because I remember I was uh, I'd passed my driving test for a gun driving down at Crumbleton for the naming ceremony she looked really nice when she came out of the shed got a bit of sunlight on her it was brilliant and you just felt that uh, there was a lot more exciting times to come again fishing operation shooting got the one net up here the code in is dropped from a I work these for the wheelhouse. The last thing you want to do is get snarked and dragged. That's a simple part right? After five hours towing, the net is hauled aboard, grabbed using this power block into this point here. A few turns in this capstan, dog rope, Jelson wire, click it in, signal, slack back. Wire comes tight, bag slacked, fish go up forward to the hopper. A guy standing here, maybe a guy standing here, taking your knife which should be sharp, up, flick open, collect the guts like that. The longest I've stood here and got it is maybe been 15, 16 hours. A sing song helped pass the time. A lot of good times doing here. A lot of good times. Twenty-four-year-old Zander West is son of Sandy West and at least the fifth generation of his family to go to the fishing. Their boat, the Steadfast, works out of Fraserburgh, the town at the heart of the crisis facing the UK's whitefish fleet. No, no. See, that's how you doffed up, anyway. There we go. Your little dance. When I was little, we used to hear a receiver in the house. You couldn't talk back, but uh, my dad talked every night, 10 o'clock. Uh, we'd sit and um, we'd be on this receiver, and he would tell us how the days and use, which was usually seeing whales or seeing this or seeing that. And then it would be, good night, love you all, uh, Fiona, Xander, Kenna, Mom. And that would be about 10 o'clock every night. And I think, I think it's, that's missing for life nowadays, is it? That little, like romantic things. Ken? I would like nothing better than Donnie to be like I was and work with me because I have enjoyed every single minute working with my dad. <laughs> It is the most dangerous job in Britain, and yet young men are still drawn to the excitement and rewards that lured their fathers and grandfathers to the hunting grounds at sea. You're getting fish, it's very good. Problem is when you do not get fish. But the tide has turned. Waters that were once British are now European, and the common fisheries policy rules the waves. The fishermen can't stomach it. It's Brussels' job to stop us catching fish, but it's our job to catch fish. If we don't catch fish, we don't get paid. Simple. They have found their industry is regarded by our politicians as having little value as a bargaining chip in Brussels. Whilst other nations prize this natural resource, here, since joining Europe, our fishermen believe they are being sacrificed through government apathy. They're fighting for survival.
The call to arms was answered by the wives of two Fraserburgh fishermen. On the 5th of November 2002, Carol MacDonald and Moreg Ritchie decided to act. The Cod Crusaders were born. I did basically say to Moreg, you know, I think something should be done about it. And obviously, we're, we're husbands tapped into this, and they'd say, all right, and you guys are going to be the ones that's going to do it. They started laughing, and the more they laughed, it, the more determined we got. So the next morning we got up, and that's when we started printing out the petition, and, and that's where we set off from. Within a week, with a 9,000 signature petition, they were at the door of 10 Downing Street. Four weeks later, a rally in Edinburgh carried a staggering 49,000 signatures to the Scottish Parliament. And just days later, they were in Brussels, confronting the European Fisheries Minister, Franz Fischler. Yeah, I will do that. I, I promise you. We're trying to save the way of life. It's a community life. If you remove an industry, especially from the likes of Fraserburgh, it's so highly dependent on the fishing, you're ripping the heart out of the whole community. You're actually taking the heritage and history also away from the community, which is what we're trying to preserve. <laughs> After the savage decommissioning in 2002, the UK government wants to destroy a further 69 boats. They target the white fish sector, particularly the newer, larger boats like Sandy's Steadfast. The banks, sensing a crisis in their massive investments, are only too willing to seize the chance to get out. Sandy and many other skippers may lose their boats, whether they like it or not. We're just uh, under the, the wheelhouse here, and if you come through, through this way, we go into the mess deck, mess deck gully, it's like a sort of recreation room as well. The whole lot's been refurbished, and it's such a shame, really, isn't it? They get it all broken up. One of the worst aspects of it is looking at this vessel and how well I've kept this vessel, a six and a half year old getting broken up. It is, to me, a criminal act. To watch her come for a keel, to fit your ways, and popping up and doing a combo, and to see a finished product, and then a few years later, now it's just a lot to get stripped back down to the keels. It's enough to make you a bit sick, to tell you the truth. The Scottish executive has set aside £40 million for decommissioning. Generous though this seems, it is estimated that around 80% of the money will go straight to the banks to pay off their loans. Skippers are actually being pushed up against the wall. They've got no choice, they have to take it if the banks are pushing them there. It's the crews that I actually feel sorry for. All they get at the end of the day, if the, if the vessel that they're on is decommissioned, is basically, you know, sorry guys, roll your gear, that's it. They don't even get, you know, as much as a thank you. They won't get a payoff. It's so heartbreaking. Carol's husband, Malcolm, is crewman on a whitefish trawler. Though sceptical of the campaign, he's come to terms with the public profile. I can't really complain. No. I know I get much slagged about it, not at all. On these slags, we don't get a heat, but... <laughs> the real McCoy. Cod. Green and white, dynamite. But for Malcolm, the days of big cod catches and good prices are a thing of the past. Years ago, maybe you got a boy's name who just made fun left in the job. That's been there. Uh, 2003, I'd say I'd make a week. If I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, I'd make 18, 19,000, I would say. If I'm lucky. Ten years ago, you'd hundreds, hundreds of boats, right? He's marking me our money ten years ago and our thousands of boxes getting landed. That day is long going. Long going. A 
I like to come in between 5 and 6 a.m. Uh, in order to get my two hours in so I can get home to put my son to school. Two years ago I took it on purely because it was a wee bit of pin money. But I mean, I've become really highly dependent and it pays my bills because my, my husband's taking a drop of wages. The secret is you need to remember exactly where you come from, where your roots are. And I'm just a pretty normal person. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, I don't like cleaning up everyone else's, you know, dirt. But, I mean, the money is clean at the end of the week. The money is clean. Um, you don't know what tomorrow brings. April 2003. The Crusaders decide to advance their campaign on a new front. Courted by the SNP, Carol stands for a seat on her local council. Police praise of its potential on the 1st of May. Vote the SNP. They could say vote McDonald all the way. <laughs> Release praise of its potential on the 1st of May. Vote McDonald and you'll be all the way. <laughs> That's a good one. If I'm unsuccessful, I mean, I've nothing to lose. Thanks very much. Because personally, my fight will continue through the Quad Crusaders in order for my community to have some sort of survival rate. Thanks. Ta -ta. Early next morning, in Fraserburgh's fish market, there's mixed support for the industry's future. Nineteen pound, you Of course it's worth fighting for. Of course it's worth fighting for. Nineteen pound, you calling? It's too late. Raising your voice at political level, you know, in standard for what you believe is surely never a pointless exercise, no. And sixty pound, if you're a man, you It's nothing to be politics for me. I just get a living out of it. If it was doing it, it was doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, the result in Ward 11, <coughs> Carol McDonald, Scottish National Party. Hiya, honey, it's Blake. Blake, who did you like? 475. Oh, I've lost it. You lost? Aye, 154 votes, I lost it by. Are you alright? I am fine, I only two to the fine skin. The fight will go on through the code procedures. God. Top. Oh no. Aye. Look, you, even your t-shirt now is a clutter. Oh, Finish yourselves. Well, hang on and took it down to me. Undaunted by the defeat, the Crusaders returned to their favoured ground, the media. To really have some faith in the industry, because at the end of the day, we actually have to inject some positivity into this budget. Their greatest strength is their ability to attract press coverage of the crisis. How can I help you? You want a story, are you? I'm at the point of uh, transitional age. Bradshaw, sure. once we advised him about what we... From publicity comes credibility. They gain access to government ministers and contribute to Number 10's report on the industry. All this on a campaign funded by themselves with contributions from the industry and local supporters. Yeah. They've realised that we've got capabilities that we didn't realise we had before. They admitted they're not getting through reading. There's more to life than being a wife and a mother and... Although I was quite happy with that six months ago. So let's put them to, to some use. We've had to sacrifice quite a lot in order to forefront this campaign. I mean, I've got three kids and I've got a grandchild. I mean, Morag's got seven kids. A message from my husband. We're still there when the important times, you know, meal times and bed times. But the quality time with our kids is not the same anymore. July, the decommissioning list is published, and Sandy's boat, the Steadfast, is on it. He's unimpressed with the offer, but his bank is pressing him to accept. He has a month to decide. This boat approximately costs 1.35 million. What they're offering uh, in decommission is just absolutely ridiculous. It's a mere pittance. I would come out of this with nothing if I decommissioned my boat. His bank will take all of the money plus the value of his fish quota. Tougher still, the deal even requires him to price the breaking up of his own boat. 
Within days, two Danish shipwrecking yards are in town hunting for business. Even if it's 21 or 22 ton. They aim to profit by selling on all reusable parts. It's a 5,000. Yeah. Aye. It is. So you can't be with that then. Absolutely. 69 boats are to be scrapped. And uh, we hope to get 30 or 35 boats. We don't want too many because we also have to sell the equipment. So we only go for the best. You had a 3508, huh? 35 Main engine. 3512. A 3512. Some of the skippers uh, get mad. Almost tell us to fog off the boat, so to speak, because uh, it's a really tension time and they cannot make up their mind about the decommissioning. And then there was the, the, the gyro compass. Okay. You've got that one as well? Yeah. Good. Okay. And I've got everything. Fine. I needed to know. My hopes for the future, I think, is the same as most fishermen, is that we can go on, keep doing what the family has done for years, that's catch fish. The West family has built each boat mindful of the next generation. The crew of the fourth Steadfast are Sandy's two sons, a nephew, as well as a cook loyal to the boat for 21 years. Sandy stays ashore to weigh up the future. For years, his boys have been looking forward to taking over the family business. There's a fierce sense of pride every time you take a boat out of Herba. And probably even more so when your dad's watching you do it. It's strange. Say, possibly, could be the last trip of the boat. We don't know. It's very sad to see. For every man at sea, there are at least five or six people ashore working in the support industries. We're going out the door here. The rest of Europe is building new super trawlers, and we have been demised deliberately. There must be a hidden agenda for the Scottish fleet. They want the south, and the only way they want the south is to give one of the richest fishing grounds there is. We could become the first island in the history of the world that doesn't even have a fishing industry. It's not because of conservation. It's about accommodation of the Spanish and the European fleet. We're being sacrificed on the altar of Euro Union. Around the harbour here, it's uh, basically all little industries. There's no big ones at all. There's the electrical engineers, which is us, painter, plumber, the hydraulic man. Can't remember the ball, but there's loads. This year alone, and we reckon four, maybe five hundred jobs ashore will be lost with this decommissioning. There's got to be a point that things is going to collapse. Their fears are based on previous decommissioning rounds when they received no compensation and losses ran into hundreds of thousands of pounds. This has been a shoe shop for 20 years. Nobody has confidence in the fishing. Nobody has confidence in the town. The new company just doesn't have the confidence to sign a long-term lease. Just nobody seems to have the get-up and go. Well, they do. Actually, they do. The cod casinos are doing quite a good job. But your heart and soul goes into the shop. It becomes you, and you become it. And it's gone. It's gone. Like that.